I fell in love with her unique style, but never thought it would be the reason she'd walk away while her world applauds her boldness. I'm left questioning if I ever truly knew the girl behind the dresses. My relationship with my girlfriend began as a friendship during our college years, a period marked by shared classes and mutual friends, though it never ventured beyond casual chats and group hangouts. It was only after she had thrown her graduation cap into the air that our connection took a turn toward something more profound. As the familiarity of our academic surroundings faded, our personal bond found new ground to flourish on. Over the past five months, what started as a gentle rekindling of acquaintances blossomed into a deep and comfortable romance. We've discovered joy in each other's company, finding comfort in shared silences just as much as in our conversations. Our love has the easy rhythm of a long, familiar song, yet every day brings a new verse, a little surprise that deepens our connection. From the outset, what set her apart was her distinctive sense of style. She dresses in a way that can best be described as princess fairy tale like with long frilly skirts and lace blouses dominating her wardrobe. This isn't just an occasional flourish for special occasions. This is her daily attire, except at her workplace. With her striking looks, she carries this style with an effortless grace, and initially I found it utterly charming. However, as our relationship has progressed, I've become increasingly aware of how much time and effort she dedicates to maintaining this unique aesthetic. She doesn't just wear these clothes. She lives and breathes this style. She runs a vibrant blog that beautifully showcases her unique fashion sensibilities, captivating a significant following of enthusiasts who eagerly await her daily updates. Each morning, she immerses herself in the world of fashion posting stunning photos that highlight her outfits, meticulously managing links to similar clothing items, and crafting beautiful pieces for her Etsy store. Her days are filled with hours of sewing, designing, and preparing fresh content, all while pouring her heart into her passion. Whenever we step out together, what begins as a simple outing often morphs into a public spectacle. People can't seem to take their eyes off her, openly staring, mesmerized by the magic she carries with her. It's not just a glance here or there, some even pull out their phones to snap photos, believing they've stumbled upon someone too enchanting, as if she's walked straight from the pages of a storybook into reality. I admire her for this, for the boldness and creativity that radiate from her, but the constant attention weighs on me. It's like being under a spotlight I never asked for and it makes me feel uneasy like we're always on display. One evening, in a rare moment of vulnerability, I asked her if she would consider toning down her outfits when we're together. I didn't want to stifle her or take away from who she is, but I hoped that a softer, more understated look might draw less attention and ease the feeling of always being watched. To my surprise, she took my words to heart, agreeing to dial back on some of the more elaborate accessories like the stunning hairpieces she often wears. Yet even without these, her presence remained unmistakably vivid, her style vibrant and true to herself, unshakable. And I love that about her, her fearlessness, her refusal to blend in. But deep down, I couldn't shake the worry that her bold fashion choices might overshadow the parts of her I hold so dear, her intelligence, her kindness, the depth of her heart. We talked about it several times, but each time she brushed off my concerns perhaps thinking that I was trying to mold her into someone she's not. I thought maybe, just maybe, her new job a corporate environment that tends to lean more towards conventionality might nudge her towards a more subdued wardrobe. Surely the formalities of a professional setting would call for a shift, and perhaps she would feel less compelled to stand out in such dramatic ways. But life, as it often does, surprised me. Her new colleagues and even her boss didn't just tolerate her eclectic style, they embraced it. They welcomed her individuality with open arms, celebrating her unique flair rather than urging her to conform. Her dresses, the bright colors, the intricate details became a conversation piece, something admired rather than questioned. And in that space, surrounded by acceptance, her confidence only grew. So here I am, grappling with my feelings. On one hand, I'm so proud of her for staying true to who she is, for never bending to societal norms or expectations. On the other hand, I still feel uneasy, torn between my admiration for her authenticity and my lingering discomfort with how the world sees her. It's a delicate balance, and I find myself questioning whether my concerns are really about her well-being or simply my own desire for her to fit into a mold that makes me feel more comfortable. As much as I try to set aside my worries, the truth is, I'm still navigating what it means to love someone who is unapologetically herself in a world that so often demands conformity. 
Her boss, a vibrant and dynamic woman celebrated for her commitment to fostering creativity, showered her with praise for the authenticity and unique flair she brought to the team. It was a breath of fresh air in the often state office environment, and her colleagues frequently expressed their delight in her daily outfit choices, viewing them as a source of inspiration and joy. This warm acceptance and unwavering support not only bolstered her confidence but also reinforced her belief in the power of personal expression through fashion. As I observed her at work, it became abundantly clear that her style was much more than mere clothing. It was an integral part of her identity that resonated deeply with those around her. The workplace, which I had naively assumed would demand conformity, instead transformed into a sanctuary where her creativity and uniqueness were celebrated. This vibrant environment enhanced her sense of belonging and fulfillment, reminding me of the profound importance of embracing individuality in all its forms. It struck me that personal style and professional success are not mutually exclusive, rather, they can enrich one another in a supportive setting. Yet navigating this aspect of our relationship has proven to be a complex challenge. I genuinely want to be her greatest supporter and celebrate her individuality. But I also feel an urgency to discuss the potential long-term implications of her choices without coming across as critical or unsupportive. Finding this delicate balance is no easy task. I often ponder how to effectively communicate my feelings without undermining her beautiful expression of self. I'm still grappling with the right approach to this sensitive conversation hoping to honor both her unique style and my own concerns. How can I gently talk to her about dressing more appropriately without causing her pain or making her feel judged? Update 1. I hadn't intended to provide an update, but circumstances have shifted dramatically. I've been processing a whirlwind of emotions, contemplating how to address my girlfriend's style while striving to strike a balance between embracing her uniqueness and feeling more at ease during our public outings together. Just as I was gathering my thoughts, Life threw me a curveball. Last week out of nowhere she called me after work asking if she could swing by my place. I readily agreed, thinking we might enjoy a cozy evening together and perhaps even discuss my thoughts over a comforting dinner. However, when she arrived I immediately sensed something was amiss. She declined my offer to cook, instead insisting we needed to have a serious conversation. Half-jokingly I asked if she was breaking up with me, and the look of guilt that flashed across her face was a harbinger of the heavy discussion to come. She explained that she felt we were at different stages in our lives, each desiring different things for our futures. As we sat together in our favorite little cat field with quirky art on the walls and mismatched chairs that somehow added to its charm her voice was calm, almost rehearsed, as if she had rehearsed this speech countless times in her mind before finally voicing it. I sat Sat there, mostly silent, nodding occasionally trying to process the weight of her words. The atmosphere that had once felt so warm now hung heavy with uncertainty, making each passing moment feel like an eternity. It felt surreal, this stark contrast between the lively ambience of the cafe and the somber mood at our table. She talked about how she envisioned her future, filled with aspirations and plans that didn't seem to include me. It wasn't about fault or blame, it was just a realization that our paths, once so aligned, were now diverging. I remember watching her, the way her hands moved animatedly as she explained her need for change, how important it was for her to follow her dreams, which now required her to move to a new city. The realization that we were breaking up sank in slowly like a stone gradually making its way to the bottom of a lake. It was my first time being on the receiving end of a breakup. Until then, I'd somehow managed to avoid this particular kind of heartache. I had always heard that breakups were tough, but experiencing it firsthand was a different ordeal altogether. We parted ways that day with a promise to remain friends a hopeful note in a melody that had turned melancholic. But as I walked away, the emptiness of the promise hung heavy in the air. The suddenness of it all left me reeling. One moment we were planning weekend getaways and the next we were saying goodbye. The following days were a blur of emotions, moments of rational understanding interspersed with pangs of loss. It's been rough, to say the least. The loneliness feels more acute at night, and there are moments when I catch myself reaching out to text her about something funny or interesting before reality hits me again. I've been trying to keep busy to fill the void with hobbies and meetups with friends, but the adjustment is a work in progress, a journey of relearning how to be just me again without the us that had become so integral to my identity. The breakup, as gentle and as reasoned as it was, marked the end of a chapter, but the suddenness of it left me reeling. It was my first experience being on the receiving end of a breakup and frankly it's been rough. Therefore, amidst the turbulence of emotions, there's a burgeoning sense of personal growth and understanding that sometimes, loving someone means letting them go. And so, as I forge ahead, there's a part of me that's thankful for the shared memories and hopeful for what the future holds, for both of us. Specifically with social media play, navigating the fallout has been especially difficult. I noticed a surge of interactions on her profile as soon as her relationship status changed. 
All these alternative-looking guys have been liking her posts and commenting on her pictures. They've been liking her posts and leaving comments, and it stings to see. I know it's probably nothing serious. I don't think she's seeing these guys, but it still hurts. Each notification I saw felt like a small jab. While I know logically that interactions on social media are often surface level, lacking depth or real meaning, I couldn't help but feel stung by the speed and intensity of their engagement. It was as if my presence once central had suddenly been overshadowed by a few clicks, likes, and comments than comments that made me feel replaced, invisible even. The moments we shared, one significant significant, seemed to evaporate in the wake of a public display of attention from others. I tried telling myself that this was all superficial, just a group of her friends from the blogging community who felt freer now that she was publicly single, but knowing this didn't take away the sting. Watching it all unfold was like standing on the sidelines witnessing a part of her life where I no longer had any claim, any voice. It wasn't meant to send a message, but it did loud and clear that our chapter was over and hers was moving forward without me. The way her online world lit up with vibrant activity only served to highlight how separate we had become. While her life was on full display, buzzing with energy and support, mine remained quiet, private, and maybe a bit too closed off. This difference between us, one that I hadn't fully recognized before, became painfully clear in those moments. Her world was dynamic, with people rallying around her newfound single status while I was left grappling with a reality I wasn't ready to face. The rational part of me knows that social media is just a facade, that it doesn't reflect the complexities of real life. But even so, each notification, each post felt like a reminder of the life we had and the stark contrast of what exists now. In trying to navigate these feelings, I've realized that sometimes, for the sake of my emotional health, I need to take a step back from these online spaces. It's not easy to focus on healing when you're constantly confronted with reminders of what's changed, but I know I need to focus on my own recovery rather than what's happening on a screen. A good friend of mine has been trying to cheer me up through all of this, even suggesting I try going on a date. He thinks it might help me move on, provide some normalcy, or at the very least a distraction. And while I understand where he's coming from, I can't help but feel conflicted. A part of me knows he's right it could be a good distraction, something to shake up my routine. But there's another part of me that feels completely unready. I feel broken, and the thought of stepping into the dating world again feels overwhelming, like I'd just be going through the motions. It wouldn't be fair to anyone I'd meet because I know I'm not really present. This whole situation has forced me to look inward, to ask myself what I really need right now. And honestly, I think what I need is time. Time to heal. Time to redefine what I want for myself before jumping into anything new. It's a confusing period, trying to figure out the balance between moving on and giving myself the space to recover from a relationship that ended before I was ready. As much as I appreciate my friend's suggestion, I think I need more time to just be with myself, to reflect on what happened, and to rebuild my emotional strength. Update 2 Stumbling upon an old email account recently felt like opening a time capsule. I hadn't accessed it in nearly a decade, and to my surprise I could still log in. What I didn't expect were the messages waiting for me comments and notes from friends long gone, and even more startling. Reminders of an old breakup that had once felt like the end of my world. Those old messages reminded me of how much has changed, and yet how some things, like the way we heal, take time. It's a bit surreal and admittedly somewhat embarrassing to revisit those moments now. The breakup that dominated my thoughts and feelings back then feels like a distant echo today. At the time, being dumped was a major blow to my ego and emotions. Looking back, it's clear that our relationship wasn't destined to last, and my reaction was more about the sting of rejection than the actual loss of what we had. Fast forward to today, I'm 33 years old, and life has taken a beautifully different turn. I'm married to an incredible woman who is 31, and we've been building our lives together for the past four years. From her, I've learned valuable lessons about the importance of genuinely supporting each other's passions. She has a deep love for running and baking, activities that bring her joy and fulfillment, which I wholeheartedly encourage. We also have a delightful daughter who's about to turn three. Raising her has expanded my understanding of freedom and expression. I am committed to ensuring my daughter grows up knowing she can explore her interests safely and without restraint. I want her to be free to express herself however she likes as long as it is safe. I would do anything for my wife and daughter. Interestingly, I've maintained a distant but amicable connection with my ex via social media. We don't engage in conversations, but we keep up with each other's lives through occasional likes. She has since moved on and is happily married to another woman. They both embrace a unique dress style that's quite distinctive, 
Though less intense than her previous fairy tale princess attire, their photos, often set against the rustic backdrop of their farm, bring to mind scenes from Anne of Green Gables. It's heartwarming to see her looking so content and at peace in her current life. This journey from heartache to happiness has taught me a lot about myself and about relationships. My early 20s were marked by immaturity and a lack of understanding about what it means to be truly supportive. Experiencing that breakup, painful as it was, helped me grow and prepared me to be a better partner in my marriage. It underscored the importance of respecting and celebrating my partner's interests as integral parts of who they are. My objectives and viewpoints have changed dramatically now that I have a family of my own. The dramas that used to seem so overwhelming now look like stepping stones that help me get to where I am now, which is a position of greater understanding and appreciation for the complexities of life. My true love is the easygoing past of our family life, my wife's pastimes, and my daughter's future pursuits. In essence, rediscovering that old email account didn't just remind me of who I used to be, it highlighted how far I've come. It served as a reflection on personal growth and the beauty of moving forward. A reminder of the resilience of the human spirit and the endless capacity for change and happiness that we all possess.